so Derek, we know that you had the uh, Ultimate Fighter that almost happened. You were there just before filming was about to get started. It didn't happen. So you come out here, you win your UFC debut. How much better is it for you to go this route than it was maybe to even be on the Ultimate Fighter? Uh, this route was definitely better, you know. I feel fully vindicated, you know. Uh, long road, tough year. And it's just funny how things work. Two days left in the year and my whole year just changed around. And you know, it was all well worth it and definitely a learning experience. You took this fight on extremely short notice. How hard was it for you to get ready, prepare, make the weight cut, or were you just ready? Uh, no, no, no. I took the fight on eight days notice. Uh, like I tell everybody, I was eating donuts before, like uh, the week before I started my training camp. And to take a fight against, I'm a wrestler, that's my base. So uh, to take a fight against a guy like Chris Lieben, if I take him down and I get tired, I lay on him, the ref stand us up, then I'm back in his game, you know? So I definitely had to just stay focused and just be ready in all facets of the game. And he's definitely dangerous on his feet. So I definitely, that was definitely one of the things in my mind. I know I could take him down for sure, but when I take him down, if I just lay on him and not stay active, he stands us back up, then I'm back in his game again. So I just try to stay focused and just prepare the best I can and really focus on my diet with the time that I had remaining in the fight. What was your diet like in the eight days notice? I mean, what do you switch to in order to make the weight like that? Well, uh, even though I was in good shape for my previous camps when I got a six week to two month camp in, um, I never really focused on my diet. So I worked with this nutritionist, uh, Eric, um, he works with Misha Tate and a couple other guys from Alpha Mills, but I worked with him. Uh, he was telling me what to eat, like uh, in the mornings, in the evenings, eat a lot of spinach, uh, chicken, you know, I like chicken, and uh, just, you know, eggs in the morning and stuff like that. So I just really focus on my diet and try to show up that fast, it being that I, like, that I had less time, so. You hit him with some clean shots. Were you surprised you didn't knock him out? Yeah, I know, right? I was tired, but I was hitting him with clean. I mean, I caught him with some nice one-twos, like even back to back. I think I hit him with three one-twos in a in a row, and he was just like, Ugh. I was like, man, this guy is a zombie. Let me get two carried away. So uh, the guy's 12 and seven in the UFC, now 12 and eight. He had 19 fights in UFC, 22 and eight. You know, fearless knockout power, and I definitely seen it firsthand. I hit the guy, he just kept coming forward, and you know, he, he's just a pure fighter and the pure definition of a fighter. People booed because it was Chris Lieben, and they wanted to see him on his feet throwing blows, but I mean, it wasn't that boring of a fight. You know, I brought it, I stood up with him, I took him down, I stayed active in the first round, and you know, I just gave it all I could with eight, eight days notice and just get better in the future. I think at the weigh-in, Chris Lieben got one of the loudest ovations. Uh, you know, he's a well-known face inside the UFC, and, and now that you have a win over him, what does that do for you? Ah, it definitely put me on the map, you know. Uh, people now, I mean, like I, I told, think I told Ariel, uh, I'm one of the most popular, unpopular guys in, of all time, you know. Uh, I just, I'm just a cool guy, you know, that's how I look at myself. I, I talk to anybody, I talk to a lot of fans on Twitter. People love me, I'm sure it's going crazy right now, and I just show everybody respect and just have fun, just live life and be me, so just happy about this win. Get better, just get back in the gym. Uh, I'm back motivated now. I haven't been motivated in over a year. Like I said, this year has been rough for me. So just to get back, refocused, and make myself the best I can be and be a champion one day and just put on exciting, good fights, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Cheerleading. Yeah, I heard a lot that you were doing a lot of cheerleading and you chose it over, uh, was it wrestling? Yes. So explain to me, I guess, what your role was. Were you like throwing the girls in the pyramid or something? Right. Yeah, uh, cheerleader, I wasn't one of those like rah, 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 do cheers. Uh, to be fully honest, I, I started at a young age, sixth grade, and I went to camps with about 5,000 girls and it was like 20 guys and <laughs> half, you know, I mean, it was, it was just a good time, you know, at an early age, I was just, 5,000 girls, 20 guys, I was like, okay, forget football, forget basketball, wrestling, all that, you know, let's just hang out with girls all the time. So I was one of those guys that did a lot of gymnastics and uh, tossed girls up in the air, and that gave me a lot of physical and core strength and helped my balance and gave me a lot of flexibility. So I, it definitely helped me out in, in, the, in that area. With Strike Force folding, how fortunate do you feel to have made this transition? Uh, I'm the first guy from Strike Force to come over. Uh, Strike Force represent, you know, I can say that because it's under the same camp, um, company, but you know, it feels good. You know, I set the tone so all the other guys in Strike Force can come over and feel comfortable. And good luck to those guys. Let's blend in. Let's let's all just have a good year. And that's that.
Have you spoke with any of the other guys from Strike Force and say how they're doing, or the ones maybe that aren't fighting on that January 12th card, and what their future's looking like? Yeah, I talked to I talked to a few guys. You know, I talked to guys that's coming over. I talked to guys who don't know if they're coming over. I talked to guys who aren't coming over, and it's just you know just telling everybody to stay upbeat. You know, this is a fight game. Everything is timing in this game. As you can see, the Ultimate Fighter didn't pan out. Um, so everything is timing in this game, and just. You know, staying, trying to stay focused through the rough times. What do you do to celebrate? I uh, go home and spend time with my little girls, my true uh, motivation in life, my two little girls back at home. So that's my that's my my treat to myself is uh, probably taking them to Disney World or something like that. So. Are you feeling like uh, not making the tough show is sort of like a blessing in disguise now? Definitely. I'm definitely a believer of God and put God first, and not making the Ultimate Fighter show was definitely a Blessing this guys, you know, I miss the, I miss the holidays, I miss Christmas, I miss uh, Thanksgiving, Halloween with, for my little girl. So um, everything happens for a reason, you know. I, I sacrificed a lot, and it's, it all paid off tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.